Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR's Biggest What Ifs, Kenny Irwin Jr. Kenny Irwin Jr. is a former USAC and NASCAR driver who competed from 1991 through 2000. He got his start in racing quarter midgets in the second grade, earning his SCCA competition license racing a turbocharged Buick Grand National in the GT1 category before racing for his father in the IMSA American Challenge. This all while Irwin was still a teenager. By the time 1991 had come, Irwin had made the move up to USAC, finally running full-time in 1993 in the USAC Sprint Car Series, winning several races on his way to the Rookie of the Year honors. For the 1994 season, Irwin became that series Rookie of the Year also, finishing second in points standings in 1995. Then, in 1996, Irwin was able to win the USAC National Midget Series Championship. Also in 96, Irwin made his NASCAR debut in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series behind the wheel of a number 26 Ford for NB Motorsports at Phoenix in the spring, starting and finishing 32nd. Altogether, he made five starts in the Crest of Truck Series that season. The other four starts were for Liberty Racing in the number 62 and number 98 Fords, with the best start of first and the best finish of fifth, both coming at Richmond in the fall. For the 1997 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series season, Irwin returned to the number 98 Ray Bestis Brakes Ford full-time. His best start was third at Richmond in the fall, and his best finish was first twice, scoring his first career Craftsman Truck Series victory at Homestead in the spring. Then, a second race win came at Texas in the spring. For a first full-time season in NASCAR, Urban had a solid season, spending five weeks inside the top five and 21 weeks inside the top ten in point standings, even winning a couple races along the way. Overall, he scored zero poles, two wins, seven top fives, and ten top tens, finishing tenth in final Craftsman Truck Series point standings. Up in the Cup Series, Irwin made his NASCAR Cup Series debut at Richmond in the fall, behind the wheel of a number 27 Tonka Truck Winner's Circle Ford, owned by David Blair, starting second and finishing eighth. In fact, altogether, he and the number 27 team made four starts, and Irvin never qualified worse than 11th, though he couldn't match his season's best 8th place finish at Richmond. At the end of the season, Blair and Irwin parted ways. That following season, in 1998, after Ernie Irvin had spent... After Ernie Irvin had a second life-threatening accident at Michigan in 1997, his performance fell off even more than it did following Irvin's 1994 devastating crash in Michigan. So, Robert Yates Racing decided to part ways with Irvin at the conclusion of the 1997 season, thus opening the door for Kenny Irvin Jr. to get an opportunity behind the wheel of the famed number 28 Texaco Haviland Ford. So, Kenny Irvin Jr. became the team's newest driver for the 1998 season. Mark Reno began the season as Irwin's crew chief until race four in Atlanta, when Slugger Labby replaced him. Irwin's best start was first in Atlanta in the fall, and his best finish was fifth also in Atlanta in the fall. Really, this season was a letdown compared to the outrageously high expectations people put on this man. He had a typical rookie season. Overall, scoring one pole, zero wins, one top five, and four top tens, finishing 24th in final Cup Series point standings. With his NASCAR Cup Series rookie season behind him, Irwin returned to the number 28 Texaco Haviland Ford full-time for the 1999 NASCAR Cup Series season. Doug Reichert served as Irwin's crew chief for the 1999 season, until race 31 in Rockingham, where Raymond Fox replaced him. Irwin's best start was first twice at Texas in the spring and Darlington in the fall. His best finish was 
third at Daytona in the spring. Irwin did improve in 1999, spending most of the season in and around 20th position in, in points. As far as Irwin did improve in 1999, spending most of the season in and around the 20th position in point standings. Overall scoring, zero wins, two top fives, and six top tens, finishing 19th in final point standings in the Cup Series. As for the Xfinity Series, Irwin attempted 10 races, qualifying for five in the number 11, Ray of Back Ford, the Jarrett Favre Racing, I guess is what it was called. As far as the Xfinity Series, Irwin attempted 10 races, qualifying for 5 in the number 11, Ray Back Ford for Favre Jarrett Racing. His best start was 4th at Dover in the spring, and his best finish was 5th twice at Texas in the spring and Dover in the fall. The turn of the century, the year 2000, a year of new beginnings and new possibilities, and this indeed would hold true for Kenny Irwin Jr., until practice for the 18th race of the season at Loud by Team Sabco appeared to have a throttle stick or something mechanical go seriously wrong, sending him into the wall head-on at nearly 150 miles an hour. And this was a time before the Hans device was really implicated or safer barriers were a thing at all. Before flipping on its side and coming to rest on its roof, it took track officials 20 minutes to cut Irwin out of his battered number 42 Chevrolet in what turned out to be his final 17 NASCAR Cup Series starts of his career. His best start was 11th at Dover in the spring, and his best finish was 4th at Talladega, also in the spring. In those final 17 starts, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 1 top 5, and 1 top 10. In the Xfinity Series, just to think, what if Kenny Irwin Jr. never crashed in practice that day? Or, what if it was raining and practice was just cancelled altogether, meaning the crash never happened? Irwin made his final nine career starts in a number 42 Bell South Chevrolet, also for Team Sapco. His best start was fifth at Bristol in the spring, and his best finish was ninth at Talladega, also in the spring. Overall, nine starts, he scored zero poles, zero wins, zero top fives, and two top tens. How successful of an NASCAR career would Kenny Irwin Jr. have had? Would he have fulfilled the prophecy of being the next Jeff Gordon? These questions are just some of the reasons why Kenny Irwin Jr. is one of NASCAR's biggest what-ifs. Thanks for watching, everyone, and take care.